11 years in the lobby of the public theater mostly and in theaters and venues all around the world. But um, big thanks to the public theater for all their support. Also thanks to Howl Round who have been supporting us. Uh, we started live streaming a few years ago and Howl Round is also working with the public theater to create this community, which is awesome. So thank you for that. Um, uh, what, so what, what do we do here? We, um, we work together. Watch me work. It's about you. We work together and then for 20 minutes we work together and then I take questions about your work and your creative process. So, um, so we can all start talking about the creative process, you know. Um, what we don't have the bandwidth to do in this format is for you to read your work and have me critique it. We don't do that, but we do talk a lot about process and how you're doing and how you're keeping going, especially in these difficult times. Audrey, will you, are you gonna tell us how they can get in touch? Sure will. All right, so if you are in the Zoom, how you can ask questions is you can click a button on your screen that says raise your hand. It will likely be in a participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad. Um, and if you're watching uh, the stream on HowlRound.tv, you can um, send us questions through social media. You can go to the Public Theater's Twitter or our Instagram, or you can tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, and it's H O W L R O U N D. And that's it. Fantastic. Okay. So we're going to get working. Where's my timer? Here it is. Okay. Ready? So we're going to work for 20 minutes and then we're going to talk. All right. Here we go.
All right. Here we are. Here we are. We just did 20 minutes of work. And now here we are with the questions. If anybody has a question about your work or your creative process, raise your hand or click the button. <laughs> click the button. All right. Up first, we've got um, Melania. Go for it. Hello. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Great to see you. Great to see you too. You know that you know that I am practicing my courage of writing and I am putting the time and doing the work and coming here that I love. Thank you again for doing this. Sure. And yes, what, one thing that is happening to me right now, it's it's been a long time since I want to write for children, a theater for children. Okay. Particularly. Yes, yeah, so I am. I am trying to to do it, and that, that's the that's the idea of the work I am doing right now. I am taking a class in in Argentina. It's online. Okay, cool. I'm writing Spanish with a the professor that is from Argentina, where I am uh -huh. from, and I am enjoying that. But I, I tell you, your your help was so so key to me. So essential. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love that. So my question is for me, theater, especially when I was a girl. It was a, a refuge, a place to go, a, a safe place to go uh -huh. in the middle of several difficult things that I was living. So I would love to do that at the time of writing for children. Right. To, to, to create a safe space, not to do, you know, only entertaining for, and it's good to entertain because we need to entertain. Sure. But to, to be that space to, to know that it's okay not to be okay, and it's okay to feel feelings uh -huh. are fine. Uh -huh. So I would like to know if you have any comments or suggestions about writing for children in particular, and about this um, kind of I don't know how to call it that honesty, this humanity that I want to to bring to the place, but uh -huh. at the same time being pertinent to for children. Right, 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 right. Uh, well, you have you have three children right yes. you have three children i have one and you know we're not experts but we have a little bit of experience so uh what i find is my son appreciates um appreciates honesty you know we're reading right now um charlotte's web you know the book charlotte's web yeah. it's i may i mean i read it years and years ago and rereading it now with him and it's amazing uh what that book talks about the sort of the idea. So we don't have to, sometimes when we think we're writing for children, we think we have to like dumb it down, you know? Um, but Charlotte's Webb has in it, you know, Wilbur the pig, right? He, mm -hmm. he talks about how he has a plan for his day. At six o'clock, I'm gonna do this. At seven, I'm gonna do this. This is a pig talking, right? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And then at 3 p.m., he says, I'm going to stand very still in the yard and feel what it means to be alive. Wow. I read that and I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So children, you know, they're very, I mean, as you know, they're, you know, they're, they're very open. They haven't perhaps created or, or you know, armed themselves, you know, mm -hmm. with a lot of armor. If, if they're lucky, they're in an environment where they can still be open and which means they can, they can still be hurt. Yeah. yeah. Um, they can, they can say things they can. And I, I think just, just think that you're tell, tell a story that's engaging. Mm -hmm. um, no need to dumb it down as you know, yes. and, uh, um, and think of also the things that specific things that you appreciated in theater when you were a kid. Okay. And what kinds of things that the theater was doing for you specifically, you know, um, how did it create that safe space? Okay. How did it create that? You know, how did it create that that beautiful thing that you want to recreate now? Um, fortunately, you have a lot of experience. You've lived through it. Mm -hmm. So take those elements and employ them in your writing today. That's great. Right. Thank yeah. you very much. And spend time every day standing very still and feeling what it means to be alive. I, th I read that. I was like... You know, oh, I love yeah, it's that. you. It's absolutely beautiful. I and I put a little heart by it in the margin of the book. My son said, "Why are you putting a heart in the margin of the book?" And I said, "Because it's 
that's what mommy does. She 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 writes hearts in the Mars and Mars. It's such a beautiful passage. So okay, Great thank book. you very much. Yes, you're, you're welcome, Alani. It's always good to to talk with you. The it's same. Good. Thank you for everything. Um, next we've got Isabel. Isabel, hello. Hi. Um, uh, I'm a student. We're actually uh, reading one of your uh, plays in class in oh, one wow. of your classes, <laughs> um, and that's what brought me here actually. Oh. Um, but anyway, I have a more general question. Um, a little bit for like advice from a more experienced writer maybe like like I don't know if you experienced this but like sometimes when I'm writing I get really jittery like I can't sit still um or like it's hard to focus on what I'm writing uh -huh. and I, I don't know I was wondering if you ever experienced anything like that and if you have any advice uh-huh so you have you find it physically difficult to sit down or to sit you, still I think it's some it's like part of the like it's like I like it I don't know it's hard to get your ideas out sometimes and I like mm -hmm. want to like just stand up and walk away <laughs> a little uh, bit uh, stand up and walk away yeah have you tried writing standing up no I haven't <laughs> yeah there's a um you know they have all these standing desks I have my version of a standing desk. I, I don't have it with near me right now, but it's just a step stool, plastic step stool. You get a plastic little step stool. You put your laptop on it and you've got a standing desk. <laughs> yeah. Try that, you know, it's cheap. It's, uh, it's fun. Try stay, a lot of people write, a lot of writers, um, Hemingway, Rilke, to name a couple of them, wrote standing up. Um, it's something cool to try. Also, if you wanna, you have a hard time sitting, you wanna get up and walk, uh, walk instead of away, walk around. Do you know what I mean? You have a lot of energy. You're, it's, it's, you have a lot of like electric current in your body. So that's okay. But uh, say, I'm just gonna walk around. I'm gonna move around, you know? I'm gonna mm -hmm. feel the language in my body because language is a physical act. It's not just something that goes on in our heads. Um, especially if you're writing uh, dramatic literature, whether it's a teleplay or a screenplay or a play, you know. So uh, give into that. Walk around. <laughs> also, you can talk it out, you know. You yeah. can get your phone, you know, and, and record it. You know, you can talk about your ideas. Blah, 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 blah. Like that, you know. If it's hard to sit or stand and actually keep your hands on the keys. Also, do you write a longhand? Have you tried that? Yeah, I, I usually write in a notebook first and then I type out and edit at the okay. same time later. Okay. Because um, it makes me feel better if I can't delete it all. Right. <laughs> right. What about index cards? Hmm. You know, again, it's a it's a different it's it's just giving yourself a different tactile experience. So yeah. little index cards like, you know, here's my census card again. I still filled it out. Little <laughs> index cards, you know, right? Yeah. And you there you go. Oh, someone's holding up a oh, is that your Anna, is that your census card too? Yeah. <laughs> but the you know, little cards, right? Isabel, and you you write out just what your you know, pieces of your scenes. In this scene. You know, Jane, you know, catches a fish that's taller, that's longer than she is. Okay, great. Yeah. In this scene, something else. In this scene, something else happens. And then you have a lot of cards with your scenes on them. Yeah. It's also a helpful way um, so that you're not sort of just having to sit and write. You're, you're just, it's more manageable, bite-sized. Yeah. Thank you. That was really yeah. helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. Um, up next, we have Nat. Go for it. Oh, hey, uh, how's it going? Can you hear Hi. me? Yes, I Great. can. Um, so yeah, so uh, when I'm writing, I get sort of the way, I know a lot of people like to do outlines for their work and like mm -hmm. really write out everything and then <clears throat> go in and fill it in with dialogue. 
And I'm sort of the opposite of that, where I just have the characters, I have an idea of where I know I want them to go and I just sort of let them speak and just go for it. But then sometimes I get in a moment where I get like 20, 25 pages in and I get stuck and the characters just sort of freeze and you're like, so what do I do now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I personally don't believe in writer's block. I think there's a, I think it's just like a, I'm reaching a, a roadblock that I need just an obstacle that I need to get past, but I just don't know how to do that. And if you have any tips, like if you ever experience that for yourself uh-huh. and, uh-huh. or should I invest in a, and in more of an outline type idea? Yeah. Well, split the difference, Nat, I, I think. I mean, if you were just saying, hey, I come up with these characters, I kind of have a general idea where they I want them to go, I write it and it's totally fun and I get to the end and I'm so pleased, then I'd say, keep doing what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. But if you write 25 pages and you get stuck, then it might behoove you to do a little bit of outlining and split the difference. So there's those outlines where they write out every fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, She picks up the pen, she takes the cap off, she puts the cap back on and puts the pen down. I mean, we don't need that in our outline, right? I mean, that's not necessary right Mm -hmm. but maybe um she walks outside and meets him finally on the corner where they met years ago that might be you see what i mean so yeah yeah. so maybe you need more tent poles just a few Mm -hmm. more not a lot not Mm -hmm. overdo it but maybe you need you have characters right and you generally know where you want them to go right so those are tent poles in a way. Mm-hmm. Jane, she wants to go to Michigan to defend Governor Whitmer. No. Oh, well, that's what Jane would do in the play <laughs> if wrote it today. Uh, you know, and talk about how social distancing actually works. But um, anyway, but so you know what I mean? So you have these, these tent poles. Maybe you need a few more, you know? Yeah, yeah. Even Van Gogh sketched. Yeah. You know, Van Gogh, the painter, you know, you see these beautiful sketches that he did before he mm-hmm. committed it to oil. You know, yeah. What, yeah, do you that's think? what are you feeling? What are you feeling? No, the, yeah, that's definitely, I think I just sort of, I, I think also sometimes too, it, I, it gets to where I sort of lose interest at when I get stuck like that. And I'm like, Ugh, this is terrible. You know, that whole, the self-sabotage thing that we all do sometimes, you know, just, Oh, this is terrible. This isn't really going anywhere. This not. This is not what I wanted it to be, and right. I just. And right. I think that sort of plays into it as well. Right. But I think what you're saying is, yeah. If I just maybe just make a list of, they could do this, or they can do this, or they can do this, and yeah. just see. Yeah. Yeah. Like just what's the best path? Do, yeah, just do a sketch, not yeah. a big outline, capital O, Roman numeral kind of thing. Just sketch it out a little bit more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, give, totally. Give yourself that, a chance because it sounds like this is is creating some some difficulty and consternation. If it's not writer's block, it's yucky feelings. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's create it's creating yucky feelings, and we don't want you to have yucky feelings. I mean, any more yucky than they're going to be anyway, because writing is difficult. Yeah. Okay, but you know, in the context of the difficulty that you're going to have writing, you want to you want to use the tools. If mm-hmm. you were building a doghouse with a, a shoe and a nail, I'd say, Nat, use a hammer, yo. I don't like hammers. Well, why not? Well, I don't know. I, I, right. I might hit my thumb. I'm like, oh, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So go yeah. ahead and use the hammer, you know, Thor. <laughs> use your hammer. Uh, and, and, you know, in a, in a judicious way, in a way that feels comfortable yeah. to you. Know that that is a tool available to you. Outlines can be anything you want them to be. It's a tool. Right, right. Okay? Cool. Thank you. Yeah, that's Thank you. Thanks, Nat. Thank you. Thanks, Nat. Um, all right. Next, we've got Sahar. Go for it. Hi there. Hi. Um, I feel kind of bad that I'm asking a question before all the other hands that are up. But um, uh, I my question is about um, stage directions and mm-hmm. writing them in. Um, and I remember somebody yesterday asked about not being precious with your work. Um, and I was wondering um, how detailed should we be in our stage directions? Um, is that a turnoff? Um, 
I mean, sometimes I imagine it's like it's the building that's happening in the play, but I also don't know if I'm like trying to control what's going to happen when the play is outside my hands. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, my question is about stage directions and writing them mm -hmm. in. Yeah, it's a it's a personal thing. I mean, some directors have told me, yeah, the first thing I do is just I just ignore all the stage directions, <laughs> you know, which is annoying, <laughs> which is totally <laughs> annoying. Um, you see some writers yeah. like, you know, Tennessee Williams, he writes long pages of stage directions that are very beautiful, you know. Um, I would say it's your play, write it how you want it. You know, when you do things like um, teleplays and, and, and screenplays, you're going to have a page count issue that's going to determine how elaborate you can get in your stage directions, in your action lines, okay, right? Because you, you, you don't want it to be longer than 50 pages or 120 pages or whatever. So you have to be mindful of that. But in a play, the page count isn't really as much of an issue. So you can go to town if you want. Now, the other thing you brought up is the controlling factor. Yeah, if you're writing elaborate stage directions because you think you're gonna control what people do to your, with your play, to your play, ha, with your play, when it leaves your hands, yeah, that's, um, you can try to control it when it's out of your hands. You can be like Samuel Beckett who followed his plays around the world, and made sure they were done exactly like he wanted them. You can do that. I mean, if you wanna spend your time doing that, you know what I'm saying? And uh, great writers have done that. So you'd be following in the path of great writers who have done that. It's not something I want to do. I got other shit to do. Mm -hmm. you know, I like to see what people do with what I've written. You know, I like to see what they do with their free will, as long as they say the words on the page, you know, in a respectful way. So, so I'm, so it's two things. One, if you really want to write beautiful stage directions like Tennessee Williams, go for it, Sahar, you know, go for it. But know that no amount of stage directions are really going to be able to control people that you've never met in cities where you probably won't visit when they're doing your play, if you're lucky, you know, so you got to let go to some extent, right? You know, I know some well, a friend of mine who's a wonderful writer says he, he likes to make his plays actor proof. You know? <laughs> okay, you know, bless, I mean, go for it. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't, you know, controlling people is, I like to control people, but in a really subtle way. Like I like to put words in their mouth and have them love saying the words I've written. That's my control thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we've got Renee. Go for it. Oh, I'm surprised. I didn't think you were going to get to me. How are you? <laughs> well, well, Renee. Susan Laurie, before we do this, I want to see if you can see that. Uh, I met you with Intizaki. Oh, how about that? Yes. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, we were at the armory. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. I can see it. Yeah. Oh, it's on your phone. That's why it looks yeah. I'm like it's so shiny. Yeah, how about that, right? Yeah, I was working with her at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, what a beautiful, yeah. What a beautiful yeah. event that was. Yeah, it was. It I, was. It was a beautiful event. I remember I was sitting with a, a, a younger writer and you and Intizaki walked in. Intizaki, yeah. everybody, the wonderful writer. And you guys walked in and I stood up and the young she writer did. said, what's the matter? What's the matter? You're standing up. And I said, the queen has entered the room. Yeah. And and when the queen enters the room and you oh, stand God. that's another picture of you too yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. that was a yeah. happy day that was that was yeah. that was yeah. and god rest her um yeah, yeah i miss her a lot because i was working with her up yeah. until um yeah. past yeah oh so i just wanted to get that out first well thank you renee oh thank you well my question is hmm, i don't know how to say it except just say it straight out how do I tell, I have my story that I want to tell. Mm -hmm. And how do I tell my story without calling people out and making people look bad? Because people who know me will know who I'm talking about. Um, they just will. Right. And, and I don't want to, and, and the people are, um, they're no longer with us. But uh -huh. how, how do you do that? And still, you know, you change the names to protect the innocent. 
Right. But I guess my question is, how do you do that and still live in your truth? Right. That's a hard, that's a hard question. I that's know tricky. it is. That's tricky. That's tricky. Um, huh. I mean, part of me, I mean, I, I, yeah, part of me, you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to make, you don't want to bad mouth people. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to. Um, and yet if there's something you want to tell, if there's a story that you want to tell Renee, um, try to tell it, you know, like Emily Dickinson says, tell the, tell all the truth, but tell it slant success and circuit lies, you know? So find ways that you can make it, you know, maybe open it up a little bit, make it not just about the people, you know, you know, um, it's tricky. It's tricky though. I, I, I know the, you know, you don't want to say bad things about people and yet you want to tell the truth of what happened. Um, I would say, I mean, maybe, how about this Renee in the first draft, write it like you want to write it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Don't okay. let like, oh, people are going to think I'm some kind of biatch because I'm saying shit about <laughs> da, 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 da. You know what I mean? Just go ahead and write it like you want to write it. Okay. And then in the second draft, you might find ways to modify it. Okay. But I would say, don't, don't let it stop you that it's about real people who have done things that need to be discussed. Because when I, I read um, a lot of Michelle Obama's book, uh -huh. And I loved the way she approached it. You know, she right. told her truth right. without slamming anyone. And she told just enough in my head that right. I could kind of read between the lines. Uh-huh, uh-huh, right, right. And, and you know, when you read her book, that's not her first draft. Very you know true. That. Okay, so you know it's been through at least a couple. You know what I'm saying? So, so she writes a draft. And then she works with her editors and rewrites it. So mm -hmm. you know that the thing you're reading in our, your hand is, has been rewritten considerably. So just keep that in mind. So maybe the first draft was all like, you know, I bet it was. Yeah, what, what really happened and then I could modify it. it yeah, then you can modify and pull back a little bit. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause yeah, because because this, this is a very personal story. It's just right. an, I'm adopted, and it was just some. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm I'm adopted, and uh -huh. I found out something real weird <laughs> a couple a uh, couple of months ago about me being adopted, and I can't confront anybody that is involved in this because they they're all passed away. So, right. oh, wow. my way of find my way of uh, dealing with it is on my in, in this play. Right. Right. I'd say deal. I'd say write it. Yeah. Write it, write it, write it. And yeah. you can always pull back a little bit after it's, you've gotten that first draft or that second draft written. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and in the words of Ntozaki, she was like, tell it, tell it, damn it, tell it. <laughs> tell it. Well, can't, come on then. You write, print that big on your wall. Tell it, tell it, damn it, tell it. Tell it. Write that big on your wall. Everybody, tell it. Shit. I mean, <laughs> what are we waiting for? Right? Tell it. Tell right? it. What, what are we waiting for? Whose feelings are we safeguarding? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right? Tell That's it. That's very true. Tell, tell it, it, damn it. Tell it. <laughs> yeah, really. Zaki said it. It's true. That's it. She said right. it. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you so much. And it was thank good you, to Renee. see you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Renee. Thank you, Renee. Um, up next, we've got Christy. Christy, are you unmuted? There you go. Hi. Hi. Um, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, this has been really, really great for me. Okay. So I'm still, I would say this is more of a beginner's question, perhaps. I've learned that a lot of my dialogue as I look through is seems kind of like um, dreamy and redundant a bit, kind of just like speaking from the heart. And I'm noticing that maybe do you think it's best to just think about your actions and then place it in that way rather than just writing aimlessly what you know and feel? I think that sounds beautiful though, to write aimlessly what you know and feel. So it sounds gorgeous, your writing sounds gorgeous. Um, and maybe that's the kind of writing that you do for the first draft, you know? I mean, only, I'm only saying this because you're having an issue with it. 
You know, mm-hmm. if I were to read it, I go, oh, it's beautiful, you know. But if you're saying, well, it doesn't seem like it's really going anywhere, then mm-hmm. that's the first draft. Make sure you get through the first draft. Okay. Okay. And then when you go back and read it aloud to yourself. Okay. Then you start circling places like, yeah, what's this scene about? Is it a play, Christy? It's a play, yeah. Okay, okay. So you can search, so you can say, what is this scene about? Okay. Right? What am I, what, what is the main event in this scene? What do the characters want? What are they trying to do? Like that. So you can, you can do your rewrite based on that. And it will be um, maybe just as dreamy as it ever was, but maybe have more of a focus and a through line. Okay. It, you know, but yeah. definitely write the first draft first. Don't try to change your writing style to accommodate okay. something that you think you have to accommodate. I mean, forget all that. Just write to the end. Okay. Yeah, okay. great. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Christy. Next, you got Colette. Oh, thanks for having me. Hi. Um, this is really, really wonderful. Um, I'm sitting here thinking that as a writer, I, I just soon be a surrogate mother, bird the baby, and give it away. All that other work comes very hard. Um, this is sort of a follow up to Terry's question yesterday. I have a, a full length play with many characters who enter to tell their story, their point of view about their life in a neighborhood in Detroit. Um, and, and several times people have suggested that I turn it into a novel. They talk about the prose of it. And that just, it just seems so huge to me. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Um, so just thinking out loud about that. So you have a, a play with a lot of characters. A lot of characters. Uh, a lot of characters. Um, and because- and each, each scene is a standalone scene. So it's kind of interesting. You could pull any scene out of the play and do it individually, but yeah. it belongs to a collective. Sounds great. I, I think it sounds like a play to me. I mean, there are plenty of plays that are a series of, you know, monologues or standalone scenes. You know, I mean, I, I think it sounds like a cool play, well, but I don't understand your question. I've, it sounds I've, like a great play. Um, it, it's very, well, you know, they all came and visited it and it's very pretty and I love all these people that are in it. Um, I feel honored to spend time with them. But many of the people who have worked with me or done scenes up from it have suggested that I turn it into a novel form, turn, that it me, would read well as a novel and would reach a bigger audience. Oh, well, I don't know. Nudge, nudge. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I think if, you've already have, if you already have a draft of the play and you feel like turning it into a novel, great. If you don't, then just have, have people keep doing the scenes. Uh, you know, the standalone scenes. Think also about the, the narrative drive, you know, the dramatic drive, like how are these scenes moving? How, how does scene one, you know, work to create the environment of scene two? You know what I mean? You wanna have, you wanna feel some kind of dramatic drive to it. But that's the same even in a novel. So um, you think of Dickens, you know, Charles Dickens. You know what I mean? Um, lots of characters, lots of things going on, but there is a dramatic narrative drive to his work. So um, is it because why, I mean, they think it's a novel. If, if you wanna turn it into a novel, go for it. But it sounds like that process, that sounds like it's a lot for you. You don't seem really into it. So keep it as a play. Sounds like a cool play. Um, thanks for that. You know, um, I guess we have to be our own first audience, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly. And I would say keep workshopping it. Keep if you've written you've written all the scenes, all the it's it's complete. It's and uh -huh. about five of the scenes have been done and one mm -hmm. even uh, took a fringe fest thing here in Detroit. Uh -huh. Oh so. cool, cool. I just keep doing I just keep doing them and have it gain momentum. If you feel the desire at one point to turn it into a novel, then go for it. But um there it doesn't seem like it's not a play. It seems like a play to me. But then I like weird shit, so you know. <laughs> I like you. Right. Yeah, there you go. Right. Awesome. Thank you. 
Um, next, we have got, just to say, we've got about seven minutes left, um, and we're going to go to Emmanuel. Oh, yay. Um, hi. Um, Where are you? To... Where are um, you? <laughs> with a fake background. I'm in Paris. Oh, oh, you're with a fake background. Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, wow, you're in Paris. All right, cool. Yes. So thank you very much for doing this. It's helping this confinement amazingly. Um, so I asked a I asked a question last week. I'm I've restarted working on this musical. So thank you so much because after that first reading, which I realized after all of these sessions was way too soon <laughs> to have had that reading because I got all of this feedback and then now I'm realizing I should not have gotten any of that feedback. It was way too soon. Um, so. I'm a little bit stuck. It, okay, so it was one of the critiques, but it's quite relevant. I didn't set it in a specific place. So the characters and the relationships are, are very clear. Um, and I've heard like you're supposed to write what you know. So I grew up in Australia, but I don't really want to set it there, but maybe I should because I, um, yeah, I'm just wondering, is it, necessary to have a very specific place or can we have a vague kind of oh these people come from this sort of an area also the other reason for that is I don't want people who are performing it whoever's going to perform it I don't want it to be like oh it's set in Australia so all these people have to learn the Australian accent <laughs> like I just don't I want anyone to be able to you know their sisters so their sisters it doesn't have to be from this kind of a socioeconomic background it doesn't have to be specifically Australia or, or France or whatever right right yeah that that um that rule you know right when mm. you know you know yeah I mean you know what I'm saying I don't yeah. know what does that mean I mean what does that mean actually is that the problem is that it's a cool thing to say write what you know but it is interpreted it's like Jesus you know Mm. you know it was he cool dude misinterpreted over the years you know what i'm saying <laughs> write what you know great idea misinterpreted over the years because the way we take it write what you know you're from australia mm. you think shit now my play has to be set in australia <laughs> yeah i would bet that you know a lot more than that you see what i'm saying it's like mm -hmm. right it's not like the rule isn't right where you're from or you're only allow, allowed to write about people like you that's a mm -hmm. very limiting interpretation of that you know mm -hmm. because because who we are i mean really have you ever done this cool exercise you stand in your bathroom or bathroom or in front of a mirror and you look at yourself and you look yourself in the eyes and you go who are you really like that mm -hmm. you do that for like 30 seconds and then you realize oh shit there's a lot more going on here than I thought. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, I'm more, my big, cause you're connecting with your big self, not your little self, myself, mm. you know, Emmanuel, but your big self, the self that is connected mm. to all people, right? So that's about writing what you know. You don't have to set it in Australia just cause you're from Australia. No, mm -hmm. you don't. But you, I would think it would help to ground it in some way. You know, some way, somewhere, it can be set on the moon, it can be set on Mars, it can be set on a planet we've never been on. It just to have it be somewhere with, and if it's somewhere we've never been, make up the rules. You know, make up the rules. What we want is what I think people might want from your play, it, they might want it to have a kind of specificity and a kind of groundedness that would root the characters in some kind of reality not a reality that's australian mm. you know but something some kind of they want some kind of rules you mm. know that's all well, because, yeah go ahead because I, I would say sorry um no go so for example i would say oh i want to move out of the suburbs or like i'm just yeah so for example and then one of the comments was oh well i'm from sheffield and the suburbs is like this but if you come from this place then the suburbs means the opposite so that kind of Thing, well, I guess you can have your characters be specific. I want to move mm. out of the suburbs into what the city? Yeah, into or the into city the, or into it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, it's either I mean, from the suburbs to the city or the city to the suburbs or right, to a well, different so, suburb. 
No. Right. Just be specific because mm. I want to move out of the suburbs because in the suburbs, this, this, and this happens. And in the mm. city or wherever I want to go, I can get this, this, and this. Yeah. You, see, you mm -hmm. see what I mean? So it doesn't have to be, you don't have to name the place, but you do have to be specific about mm. what it is that you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that will help greatly. Yes. You know, just put a little more meat on the bones, mm -hmm. you know, that's all. Yeah. Okay, but you don't have so to set important. it Australia. Yeah, well, Good. it's uh, it's something. Um, I mean, if you if you think the note is is worth it, if, if, also mm. if you don't think the note is is helpful, then don't worry about it. You know, take well, what you like and leave the rest. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. What, 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 what? I, I, uh, it feels like it's taking me away from it because I'm much mm. more interested in their relationships and and it doesn't really matter where they are. Like it. That's okay. how. That's okay. How it well, feels. Then, then it's one of those notes that doesn't really work for you right now. Mm. You know what I mean? And maybe there's some notes that you got that work for you, and maybe there's yeah. some notes that don't work for you. Mm. Maybe there's a, a way of looking at the note that could be helpful. You know, but I would. I'm really serious. It does not mean that you have to set it in Australia. Thank you for that. So don't have to do that. <laughs> you might have to get a little more specific with, mm. uh, and to sort of put a little bit more. Uh, dressing on their desires, what they want to do, and mm. why, but you don't have to set it in Australia. Okay. And wherever I set it, do I have to say, I mean, can I say, uh, you don't have to have this accent? <laughs> yeah. Wherever it may be. Like, I, yeah. I don't want the actors, like, I hate it when actors, like, I it's an extra barrier if they have to try and do the specific accent from this specific thing. Rather right. than just just tell them to speak playing. how they normally speak. Yeah. Okay. The accent you have is yours. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. You know. I mean, maybe the sisters, even if they have different accents, it doesn't mm. matter. Maybe you like it doesn't matter. Mm. You know. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you so Thanks, much. Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's six o'clock. Shall we come on back tomorrow? Are you, let us come on back tomorrow let us come back tomorrow so as a reminder sign up by 3 p.m eastern time every single day and i will send you a link between 3 p.m and 4 30 p.m um, eastern and also our links for next week will be released tomorrow at three see you all very soon bye thank you thanks everyone thanks slp thank you